So, hi. Uh, this is the first time I'm uh, filming this outside. Ni vill ha trim seminarium, men jag tar det på engelska för att det är så många som vill lära sig. Så jag har jobbat med mig idag och uh, visar lite hur jag gör. So I'm switching to English. Um, I'm grooming Jubel today. And I heard somewhere that uh, Mrs. Popova wants to do a seminar, so I'm doing my seminar and then I'm going to ask her if you want to pay to do a seminar how she does it. So we have like different persons. So this is Jubel. My multi-champion. I haven't groomed him for, I think, two weeks because we are on uh, quarantine and he has a very rough coat I bathed him so he's bathed but he has still has the rough coat um, for me what I've learned from different breeders the Scottish should be three times the head size so this size should be this size should be this size and then you have a compact square Scotty. He has a really good front, so I don't need to hide anything. But normally, uh, when I see other dogs, uh, they are a little bit long here. So I always leave a little bit here, so it seems like this part is short. And then you get the Scotty shorter. I learned how to groom from different groomers. I watched them. Uh, my first person I learned from is Susie and she learned me the basics and then i watched the different dogs and shows and said hey i can do this i can do that so uh, yeah you learn from different persons i'm going to show you my way maybe it's not the correct way but i hope it can help you a little bit so let, let me just check the focus So, normally the tools I use I use a tool that I find very useful but breeder seems to think that it destroys the coat is the Andes undercoat scrape you have it in different sizes, like this, or like this, and I use it to shape the, uh, the dog, because if you need more here, then you shouldn't here in the neck. If you need the top line to be good and need more in the neck, you shouldn't take the uh, undercoat from here, but from here, so you get a very neat top line. Um, Jubel doesn't have so much uh, undercoat, especially not on his head. I uh, also um, strip the head and sometimes some people say, oh, what is this? Yes, but Jubel has no undercoat there, so I never, I can't get it too neat and I need to push it down. Just to remember that here in Europe, we are not allowed to use any products on the dog on the show. So uh, we need to be more uh, accurate when grooming, so it, he gets a tight coat. So I will get him back in his suit. So the first thing I do, I use this to take away the undercoat uh, somehow. So I'm outside today, so you know. And when I scrape it, I just hold and scrape. He doesn't have much undercoat, so... but. This helps you to get it really, really neat at the sides you need to be neat because you need this here to be really, really uh, short so you can see the beautiful uh, front leg and his shoulder. He has a very nice shoulder, so I want to show him. Also, I want to have it short here. Problem with this dog or is it a problem? He has a really good ass. His leg stands out. And I know I had a breeder called Katarina. She told me, why do you leave so much here behind? I don't leave much be here behind because 
he has an ass. So the first thing I want to do is take off here so I get really level the plane. And uh, normally I have something to compare with so I know it's straight. So my favorite tool, I've got big hands, but you have to find your own favorite tool. My favorite tool is this little one. It's from Hauptner. And the problem is, if I take a bigger uh, uh, stripping knife, I'll make holes because I have such big hands that take big, big chunks. So I use this one, or I use the Dr. Scholl footstone. It's one, I think it's one euro. I don't know how much it's outside, but the Dr. Scholl footstone, the rough one, it's really hard to get these days, but it's one of the best ones. So. Dr. Shaw Footstone and the Hauptner knife. So you see he has a lot of coat. So when pulling, you just pull just pull the outer side. You don't go inside. I always do like this, so I get it up and then I pull the outer side. This Dr. Shaw Footstone I have been in uh, various um, grooming competitions and a really nice lady who had, um, uh, I think she had Spaniel, she had this footstone and I was really amazed by it. So I start by doing the top. We want it so level that you can put your drink on it. I like gin and tonic so I'm, I'm thinking I want a coffee table on this dog. Uh, Jubel is from Poland and one of the best Polish uh, uh, breeders I know introduced me to uh, a groomer and I really love her. You should really, if you want to go and learn somewhere, you should learn from her. Her name is Malgorzata. Um, I can give you the name later on because maybe she doesn't want to figure on movie so she teaches me a lot she's a little bit hard but she teaches me so I'm starting brushing watching see here and the same with this Hauptner is the best I have now Jubel has a really easy coat because you can do what you want with him you can put uh, water harsh as it wants. Some people say, oh, put water on it or put some chalk on it to get it harsher. Yes, you can do that, but it depends on the coat. A really good dog is born with this coat and fortunately this dog has his daddy's coat, so I'm happy with it. So I took some off. Some off. Some, take some more in here. He's a little bit wavy because uh, I bathed him, but let me see. What, what here? Yeah, here. I just hold his. Uh, you see, he's really easy to uh, form because he has such good coat, really. And all his children has the same coat, except for one. He has a Ukrainian uh, boy who is a champion, junior champion. He has one Mexican girl in Mexico, junior champion. And you have seen Bjorn on my footage. It's his son too. So now I'm, I have made this coffee table. You can see it's fairly straight. I need to take a little bit here but that's the sides so I just want to show you and you look and you see something you just straight so 
this is Yubel. I groomed one side so it won't take too long. So I will groom his other side too, for you to see. Um, Yubel is a really nice dog. Um, he, according what I've learned from um, breeders, this should be like a goose egg. The same length of the head. Sorry, Yubel. Same Same length of the head, the same length here, the same length here. I haven't groomed him for two or three weeks now because of Corona. So I'm going to groom him today. So I have this Hauptner knife, my brush, Chris Christensen, I love it, and Dr. Scholl's footstone, the harsh one. Popova is going to make a grooming seminar in the Ukrainian Kennel, uh, Grooming Association. I'm going to ask her if she wants to do an international one. But I'm going to groom uh, Jubal for you today. So this is what he looks like this. Jubal has a really good coat. I bathed him yesterday and uh, he's still harsh. So um, uh, you can put anything in his coat. He will be harsh anyway. This is what it's called to have a good coat, you know, a grooming coat. So I groom the other side. I'm going to groom this side. And the first thing you want to groom is the back. So you can have your ring on it. Because going to check the camera. Yeah. So. I'm sitting on this side. at all and if you find it even you know hard you can pull it against the stone and it will get um, dull the high andis underholdskara den är faktiskt jättebra speciellt om du har bara en hund som är till sällskap så tar du bort underhållen och då kan du faktiskt forma hunden nu har inte jobbet så mycket underhåll men för andra hundar är den bra den kan också forma hunden utan att behöva trimma den. Den skär inte i pälsen. För jag har använt den på Jubel flera gånger men han har strädd pälsen då. Eh, känner och tycker du att den är för... för den, är, den, den skär inte alls. Men tycker du att den är för hård så kan du dra den mot en stäng. Men det gör inte jag. Och då använder man en sån här. Att man bara, jag tar den på sidan. Så att man får bort underhållen. För då kan man forma hunden. Eh, the dog should have a really tight coat here. So imagine yourself from the ear behind and really tight. From his elbow that should go up here. So all this you need to groom. So we are going to do the back side first. And as I am at this moment, because sometimes you get in love with some tools, I love this tool. I can show you both. Every time you pull, the way you pull the hair, so you draw hair with, the next time it will grow that way. So if I would pull it this way, pull it this way, the hair will grow that way. So you need to pull in the direction you want the hair to grow. Um, yes, we're still online. I'm just checking the camera because uh, I was talking for 10 minutes and it didn't uh, translate. So. <coughs> Let me take, I'm not pulling hard, I'm not pulling much, but I have a big hand, my hand is really big, so if I beg a bigger knife, I will make a hole. And the problem with Jubal, I don't want any bald spots from here, 
because I saw some grow out. Oh, bald spots, it will grow out again. But I don't want any bald spots from him because he has no undercoat. So it will take him four to five weeks, up to six weeks to grow back. So I need to be careful when I'm going to show because, or I use black chalk and uh, some spray. But I can show you that too. So here you have a level back. One, two, three. And this is different from different standards. Uh, my standard comes from my uh, compendium at the Swedish Kennel Club made by Mr. Don Eriksson and I follow his compendium because um, I find it really... Um, uh, it makes sense what he says there. Anyway, so I'm pulling his hair, brushing, checking. Now I have a lot here and a lot here. So I need to get this really tight because if I do like this, you can see he has a uh, leg. We'll take it in Swedish. We can also have a drink stone that's on the side here. So I'm going to do a plan. And I can do it, trim it, Och eh, när jag tycker att det är lite bobbligt så tar jag där det är bobbligt lyfter och bara drar ut lite. Och lite åt gången är alltid bättre. Eh, någon sa att han hade för mycket här bak. Men Jobel har ett eh, bakställ som är ganska stort. Jobel has a really nice ass for back hindquarters. His uh, leg is here, his hock is here. He has a really good angulation. So somebody told me, oh, you have leave too much here. No, his ass is like that, actually. So I always try to pull it down. Nah, he doesn't like me being in his ass. But when I pull it up, he has the same ass. I'm sorry. It's a really nice ass. He has a better ass than me. Um, so I really need to pull it down as much as possible. But it's impossible with that ass. He has an ass anyway. So I want it to be tight here too. How's give a plot to you? So if I'm drawing it, I just pulling you know a little bit. I'm sorry if you can't see it. I'm trying. some people they're shaving the tail here behind and it looks like half of the carrot. I want the whole carrot. I like that I want a whole carrot. So as I want the hair to grow in a certain way I pull it from the sides. Take the tail and pull it to the sides. So so now we have an okay shape on the hind quarters. Here is a little bit too much. Can you see this? He looks like he has a bump here, so we'll look at that up. I can do like this so you can see. Human has a really nice coat, so I can see really, you know, the second layer of it. Down the behind. I'm going over to the shoulder. I want it really tight. So I will put myself on the other side so you can see. All this needs to go out, you know. So I will pull this out. Det är därför jag behöver någon som kan kolla. Titta där står Rick. 
Kan du vara snäll och kolla? Ja. Så, jag groom this side and I groom the behind. So now I'm grooming this. It's not really uh, flat anyway, but he needs more grooming here, so I will groom this. And again, brushing to check how does his top line look. I find it too much here, what do you think? So, let's go there. Stand up, so you can see. Brush, brush, brush. Up with the head. What do you think about this top line? He needs to go more here. You see, he's too much here. Coming to the head soon. Just gonna make the body first. So, brush, brush, brush. It's starting to look nice. Let me check. Yeah, it's starting to look nice, don't you think? He needs a bit here. Good boy. Uh, no, the Scotties normally have a dip here, so be careful by pulling here. Try to, you know, brush, brush, brush. Look. Yeah. Stay. Look. Yeah, he looks fairly nice. Here a little bit, maybe. So what do you think? Yeah, he looks nice. So now we're going to go over to the head. I'm just going to check my um, recording. Mm. Yeah, it looks nice. So let me go over to the head. So let's start with the head. Jubal doesn't have the best head, he has a short head, what we'll do our best. So I want him to have a stop and for this I need to groom here between his eyes. I normally look at it like spades, like this, like this, like this, like this. So I want to pull this out and as he doesn't have any undercoat I need to take it really, really easy. So, I brush his eyebrows to the side, yep, and just pull a little bit. Push it up and pull. So he has a nice stop. In Sweden, in America, they want parallel sides. In Sweden we need a flat skull, stop and flat here. It doesn't say much about parallelity. But still, he has too much because I want this to be flat. And as I always, I don't shave it because he goes on show. 
And I pull this here behind his ears too because it's curly and I want it to be straight. People stop approximately in Sweden, they stop, they want it flat until the beginning of the years. So here. And then they have like a crown. And this is to show, to elongate the head, to get it longer. So, I think he has too much, so I need to pull this out, because now it looks stupid. But I pulled and made it flat until where his ears start, until here, and then I pulled behind his ears because it really looks stupid, this standing up, because he, he bathed yesterday, so he got curly. So, I pull what I can, and he has a nice flat skull. I would like this head to be longer, but there's no such thing as a perfect dog. So now I'm going to shave. I'm just going to check it's recording. Yes, still. <clears throat> so I want to feel his front and his breastbone, and I pull a finger on it, over it, and over the finger, so here he has a little mold and I shave until there. It doesn't matter if he gets bald because it will grow out. And I have a number 15 for him. And then he has no undercoat, he gets bald. But it doesn't matter, it will grow out. Three days, he's not born. The ears are small, should be small. And I want this to go away. Watch out the corner, I always hold it here like this. Against the grain. And here he has a mold too. So I stop just underneath his eye. And take this away. So he gets a clean hair. And I also pull away a little bit back to here, so. And I shave until the hair grows the other way. If I do the same on the other side. The ear. I'm wishing I was left handed. From here, until this mold. Because then I have something to work with when I do the beer. Let me check if it still is going. Yep. So now he's bald. Now he's going, it's going to grow out. So the ears, here I use number 15. On the ears, I use number 30. Because I want them neat and clean for show. So I pull, take the ear, a quarter, open it inside, Now we have the, the head. 
normally the front I want to pull this out so it's you can see that he has a, a leg so I want this to be shorter So I try to pull it more out because when you shave you can see that it's still long and I pull it. So, so let me see if it's still recording. Yes, we have two minutes left. So with my thinning scissors, I will thin out this to get a nice finish onto the short. And I always hold it straight up. So I'm going to scissor this show you in the next move. Okay? So, we shaved the front. Now we need to take this out because it doesn't look nice. So I'm using my thinner scissors can buy any one. This one I bought in Holland or at Crafts. I like it. And I pull out the ear so I can blend it in. in the front he looks really nice and as he has a very short head I need to elongate it so what to do have long eyebrows or short eyebrows personally as I'm used to long eyebrows I like on long eyebrows why because long eyebrows they elongate the head from the front short eyebrows doesn't look that very long. So, to make it even more longer, I want it to be more narrow. As he is a boy, he has a really uh, big head, or big, or yeah, a masculine head. So, in order to elongate his head, <coughs> I took his eyebrows to the sides and I tried to make it short here on this side. So I'm taking my thinning scissors and you see the difference? <coughs> I don't have corona, I'm just outside. So his head gets longer if his eyebrows follow his head. So I need to check it because his eyebrows follow his head. No, there's something sticking out here. There's something sticking out here. So let me correct that. Now his, eyebrow, his head looks longer. And then I check the side because I like, me for personally, I like to have like a straight line here and I just blend it in. So now with his long eyebrows, he has a long head. Although he doesn't have a long head. He has a flat skull, he has a stop, and he has a flat nose. But no, he's not that parallel as uh, the American judges would like to. So American judges don't like him. Although he's a multi-multi champion, I like him. 
it's a test and the same as with long eyebrows or short eyebrows it's a test so now he looks like this what do we need to do the ass so the ass I have a lot of people here in Sweden that shave all this area in the ass I personally me don't like it but it's 30 I don't want 30 I do shave around the anus because I want to keep it clean so I just shave a little bit so I have a little pump so the tail I want it to look like a carrot so I need to brush his tail brush his tail and you see it's not that neat I'm going to neaten it out so it looks really 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 neat and I want it to look like a carrot so I'm trying my best I hate tips to make it look like a carrot. No five minutes tip. Yes, I know. Thank you. Yes, that's your mom. So I don't want to shave it. It looks so stupid. Like half a carrot. So I'm trying to shape it. But as you know, I am a very worst at tails, so if anyone else can give me some tips on tails, I will gladly take them. And I like Anne's tails, but she's not here, so... Oh, and then when you're going around him, you see... Oh shit, I forgot to go here. So... This is Mr. Yubo. Another thing is the skirt. Sometimes I see so many skirts with so much hair that it destroys the movement of your dog. It flows everywhere. So I always try to pull a bit from the skirt. So it lays, you know, beautifully around the sides and I always clean around the feet so I pull the hair down and everything sticking out I scissor away and let him stand down pull up this so I can scissor around his feet so he won't fall in the ring. The ears with the tufts. You can see the ears with the tufts. I always pull the ear up. Look, the tuft is too big. So I hold it out just scissor the tufts inside the ear. Wet my fingers and try to make a pointy ear. The best thing to get the tufts right is to pull the ear like this. I'm sorry you will. And then scissor with the tufts with the Ear where it stops so it gets like this then you get the perfect tufts don't forget that if you pull the uh, air in front you get this stupid hair sticking out you should scissor it down with your thinning scissors because it looks really stupid you know and now in 
know this is sticking out thinning scissors still need to groom a little bit on his neck you see too much on his neck he looks like he has a bull's neck he's not a bull he's a scrub Nice grooming. It's not ready for show, but he's on his way. So, any questions you have, or you want me to groom or show you, just email me and I will do it again because I have like six dogs to groom. This is just Jubal. Let me see if I can get his mom out here so you can see him. Kathy! We are not allowed to use any products, but if something happens and you have a real hole in your uh, Scotty's uh, head or something, you can use Chris Christensen's black and some uh, hairspray on it and it will look black anyway. I always use this Chris Christensen. So, now we have the finished product. Not totally finished, but uh, he looks nice. Nice, Scotty. So, any questions you have, you can just call me or uh, send me an email. And I'm going to ask Mrs. Popova if she's going to make a seminar so we can all take go to this seminar because she's a really nice breeder and she's a very good groomer too. So, you have a nice day.